بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين آمين بسم الله so let's inshallah continue with the Quranic summaries that we are looking at the overview of the Quran so this is just a quick recap where we are we have looked at group one two three and we introduced group four last time and we went through the relationship between the different surahs in this group, starting from Al-Furqan and uh, <clears throat> concluding with Surah Al-Ahzab. So I think, inshallah, that was a good, alhamdulillah, exercise for us to start getting uh, used to looking at each surah holistically and then from each surah branching out to see the relationship between surahs and therefore then we have a good grasp of each group so today inshallah we uh, want to go through the ayat in this surah sorry in this group uh, regarding risala or risala so before we do that let's quickly look at the overview diagram which usually is very helpful to to <clears throat> bring our attention back to okay that's what we were doing and then inshallah this makes it easier so as always the surah al-fatiha <coughs> is the dua for guidance we ask allah ta'ala ihdina sirat al-mustaqim and uh, we mentioned last time guidance is all about asking allah ta'ala to give us the means for tazkiyah hmm? the tazkiyah which uh, we mentioned last time. Who can remind us the two branches of Tazkiyah we mentioned last time? So feel free, Bismillah. Okay, so everybody is shy to speak, mashallah. That is a good sign. If it is, inshallah, it is absolutely, it is haya. Alhamdulillah, may Allah ta'ala give us haya. Beautiful. But then you need to encourage me to tell me, yes, we understood tazkiyah. So let's try again. So we mentioned that Tazkiyah is growth, that's one aspect. And the other is uh, to remove any barriers or any, we call in Arabic mani, things that stop growth. Yeah? So this dua for guidance is essentially, when we look at it <clears throat> holistically, the Quran is all about asking Allah Ta'ala to give us the tazkiyah so that we can become the best worshippers of Allah. This is the objective of our existence, you see. This is what we are designed for. So we are asking Allah, Allah Ta'ala, <coughs> you have designed me to worship you for your ibadah. So Allah now optimize me in being able to fulfill my design objectives, if you like. And Allah Ta'ala responds in the first group of surahs by giving us our roadmap, our sharia, our guidance regarding our iman, our Islam, our vision to be shuhada ala nas and to then perform jihad and infaq in order to achieve this vision. And then the next group tells us how to follow the Prophet Sallallahu guidance and example in this path. And then Allah motivates us in the third group by telling us haq and batil, truth and falsehood, fact and fiction are always going to be in competition. There will be a struggle, but in the end haq will always prevail and the batil will always 
be completely obliterated. So you are motivated as believers to continue with your pursuit of Allah's guidance. And then we said the last three groups of surahs. Can anybody remind us what we said about the last three groups? Just as a summary. Is it Islam yeah. Bismillah. Bismillah. Uh, I think this um, this group four is about the argument for Risala, a requirement yeah. of faith in it. Good. Yeah. So requirements of faith in each one. So the first one is Risala. Then group five would be Tawheed, arguments for it and requirements, and the last is Akhirah, requirements, I'm sorry, proofs for Akhirah, and then requirements of faith in it. Anything else would you like to elaborate, if you remember what we mentioned about each group's division, subdivision, if you like? You mean like the expectations and the evidence? Yes, good. Anything else you can elaborate? about uh, i'm not i don't want to say it because it would be obvious any other way of looking at that how allah has divided the arguments in one sort of section and in another category the requirements for each group the proofs and it's a bit of a tricky question so yes proofs oh, yeah. and signs but i'm talking about a division of these groups. I, this, so this group we can divide into two types of surahs, let's say. You all know this, I know, but... Makkiya and Ma... Jazakallah khair. Makkiya surahs and Madani surahs. Very good. Jazakallah khair. Wonderful. Yeah, so the arguments are in the Makki surahs that... Uh, <clears throat> address the people who are to be invited to the belief and the requirement of faith in these in this belief is in the madani surahs which addresses the believers to say you believe in risala tawhid akhira now you are expected to do this this and this so i hope inshallah that's a good revision for us alhamdulillah any question about that anything to add Please feel free. Yeah, just just about tazkiyah. Um, is it, is tazkiyah is, is is a word from zakat and zakat it means um, nama or growth uh, of your wealth if you give zakat. So we could link it tazkiyah to zakat so that we can um, not forget what it means for us. Beautiful. Yes, very good. Jazakallah khair, brother, for that reminder. So zakat, as brother mentioned, is the nama. And even in Urdu, we say Nasho Nama, yeah, in Urdu, even the growth, the um, upcoming of something. So, this is essentially when we give zakat, we are actually increasing our wealth. SubhanAllah, this is, this is, this is Allah Ta'ala's beautiful guidance. The more you give, the more you get. The more you give in this life, the more you will get in the hereafter, which is the real intention. But even in this life, Allah Ta'ala, He will increase in the goodness. I mean, so Jazakallah Khair for that. Anything else, Benny, would you like to add or elaborate on anything we've talked about so far? Okay, that's fine. Jazakallah Khair for that. So we want to now look at um, this group, Risala and uh, some of the ayat that refer to the proofs and evidences of the risala of the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam of course uh, the ayat or the topics for evidence are not just these yeah in fact the whole quran is uh, an ayah is a dalil is a proof of the messengerhood of muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam Al Quran, just like the previous messengers were given uh, the what, what is called the mu'jiza. Mu'jiza, 
Mu'jiza is from ijz. Ijz means something that you cannot respond to. Yeah, you are speechless. You are dumbfounded. You cannot respond. You cannot reply. You cannot meet the challenge. You are completely defeated. Yes. So <clears throat> the mu'jiza, or sometimes we <clears throat> refer to that as miracle, is the miracle given, for example, to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. What was his miracles or his miracle? Anybody who would like to share? You mean all the nine ones? Oh, yeah. Musa alayhi salam was given many miracles. So you just mentioned there were nine. Just anything in particular? Uh, asa. For example, his asa, yeah? His the staff. staff. Yeah, staff. staff. Now, it's very interesting, this word staff. Because what do we use that for nowadays? To, to get your work done. Yeah, people. So they are your asa, eh? all oh, your yeah. staff. <laughs> all your staff. They are your support. Personnel. Yes, that makes sense? Yeah. Asa. Anything else about Musa, alayhi salam? He's... Uh, uh, the ayah. Sorry, say again. the the, the, the... Yadeh Yes, the bright light that would emanate from his hand when he would place it under his uh, his uh, his arm, if you like. Hmm? So all of these were the mu'jizat. Yeah, mu'jizat, mu'jiza, mu'jiza which is uh, the miracle or that proof that you cannot contend with. You are completely demolished. You are, you have ijz. Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, ghayra, ghayru mu'jizin. People will not be able to run away from Allah. There's nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to go. You are completely defeated. So this is the, some of the ayat, another word for this mu'jiza, ayah as well in the Quran is of Musa lesson. What was the uh, other main miracle or mu'jizah given to Musa that defeated the people of his time? Red Sea. Split up the okay. Red Sea. Yeah, Red Sea. But before that? Is it when Allah asked him to put the blood of sheep on the door? Um... That, uh, yeah. I, mean, I, I mean that the, 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 the miracle that he, nobody could, uh, in fact, they were defeated. The people who claimed to have the same miracle, they were defeated completely. I'm sure you know, but you maybe my question is not clear. Who did he contend with? Uh, the magicians. Yeah. Magicians, magicians, yeah. Sihr. Yeah, magic, the magicians. Oops. Yeah. Magic. So Sihar was the main, if you like, skill of his time. Sihar. Yeah, people were magicians. They were, this was really a uh, optical illusion. Optical illusion that w they made you think it was something but it actually wasn't, yeah, like the snakes. They were not really snakes, but they seemed. But Musa alayhi salam's uh, asa, he it actually became an actual snake. So therefore the magicians knew this is not magic. This is uh, a mu'jiza. We can't contend with this. Is this making sense? Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. And then Isa alayhi salam, what was his... Uh, his mu'jizat or his uh, ayat. Speak in the cradle. cradle. Okay, so he spoke in the cradle. Even before that, his birth is a miracle. Hmm? Yes. What else? Oh, and shifa. Shifa to the... Shifa, yeah. Cure. He could cure. Cure. Who could, could he cure? He could cure... The blind and the lepers. Blind. People who were blind from birth. Leper. Bring death to life. Absolutely. Resurrection. Subhanallah. 
Resurrection only Allah can do. Subhanallah. La ilaha illallah. Yes. And all of this he did bi idhnillah, bi idhnillah, bi idhnillah. <clears throat> so what was his... So in the time of Musa, magic was the main skill. What was the main uh, skill of the people of the time of Isa alayhi salam? Any idea? Birth. Birth? Not quite. What were the cure? people... Was it, was it cure? Yes, medicine, isn't it? Medicine. Tib. They call it in Arabic tib, yeah? Yes. Medicine. Yes. Yeah. 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 Any other word in Arabic? I think some brothers and sisters are Arab. Anything better than that? Dawa. Dawa. Okay. Yeah. Shifa. 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 Dawa. Yeah, all of these beautiful. So Isa alayhi salam, he came with such cure that nobody could uh, compete, isn't it? And they were the experts. They claimed to be experts in medicine, in tib, in shifa, in dawa. So this is mu'jiza. You can't compete. So now the mu'jiza of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. In his time, what are the people known for? Miraj. Poetry. I don't. The poetry, language. Mm -hmm. Language. What else? Eloquence. Eloquence, literacy, adab, adab, yes, balagha, balagha, yes, any other words you can think of, fasaha, fasaha, sister said, sorry, what did you say, sister? System. The government and the system. Law. Law. Sorry, you're breaking up. I didn't understand. Yeah, it's system like law, Sharia. Okay, we'll come to that, inshallah. But the people of the time, they were the people known, the Arabs were known for their fasaha, their balagha, their eloquence, their language, their poetry, their literacy. Yeah? Yeah. And they would have an annual competition. Mm -hmm. And the best piece of literature or poetry was then selected. And it was then hung on the door of the Kaaba. Yes, so they were known for this. So, the, so therefore, the Mu'jiza of Muhammad wasalam, was Al-Quran. Al-Quran came and they could not compete with this. Subhanallah al-Azim. Fa'atu bi suratim min mithlihi wada'u shuhada'akum. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran many places, and if you want to search that, if we go to um, the other resource, so it's useful to know this. Sometimes you need to uh, be able to do this. In fact, I think the same one. If we can, uh, okay, we can't search it there. If I open it in my... Uh, iBooks, then we can actually quickly search where in the Quran has Allah Ta'ala mentioned the challenge of the Quran, yeah? The challenge of the Quran. So if we search challenge, challenge, and then inshallah it should tell us here, yeah? you see? Where Allah Ta'ala has you see this very nice list now in front of you, yeah? yeah. So Quran is Hat preservation and challenge. Surah Hijr, Al Isra, Al Nur. Then the Quran's eternal challenge, Al Furqan, Al Sajda. Again, the Quran challenge, uh, Quran is Haq. Quran is a challenge. Bring 10 surahs like it, Quran's challenge. And you can see if you go to any one of these, you see, okay, this is Surah Hud, yeah? Bring 10 surahs like it, etc. And Alhamdulillah, I'm sure you know that anyway. But this is just quick reference we can make, especially if we are talking to somebody non-Muslim, and even for our own strength of our iman, to give us strength in our iman of Al Quran, in Quran, that this is uh, Allah Taala's mu'jiza. 
they could not contend. And Allah Ta'ala said right at the beginning of the Quran <clears throat> in Surah Al-Baqarah. Yeah, right in the beginning of the Quran. Uh, look at this beautiful. The beginning of the Quran mentions Alif Lam Mim Dhalik Al Kitab La Raib Fi La Raib La Raib. Yeah. Now there's no time to go into detail of Raib because there are different words used in the Quran for doubt. Yeah. There is Raib. There is Shak. There are others, but no time to go into that. But Raib, if you have any Raib, any <clears throat> doubt whatsoever of any type, which actually Raib is the one that you don't really have doubt in really. But uh, if you claim that you have any doubt, then Allah Ta'ala says right in the beginning of the Quran, in وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ Ayat 23. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا If you have any shadow of a doubt regarding what we have sent down upon our slave Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, fa'tu, then bring, bi surah, even one surah, min mithlihi, like it. And Allah Ta'ala is saying, wada ushuhada akum min dunillah in kutum sadiqeen. If you really claim that this is not from him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you can gather all the people, even in the Quran, in swal jinn. Yes, Surah Al-Isra mentions you will never be able to. Then Allah Ta'ala says something very, very uh, emphatic right in the beginning of the Quran. فَإِلْ لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا If you are unable to. وَلَنْ تَفْعَلُوا لَنْ means you will never ever in the future be able to bring this. Absolutely. Never. تَفْعَلُوا You will never be able to do it. So this is uh, one of the aspects of the mu'jiza of Al-Qur'an. Of course, this we can take a whole lesson for this Ijaz Al-Qur'an. In fact, you can take lessons for the Ijaz Al-Qur'an. And I encourage, <clears throat> I encourage uh, all of us to study what is called Ulum Al-Qur'an. Hmm? Ulum Al-Qur'an. This is uh, uh, the beautiful science of Al-Qur'an. Yeah, and in that there is a section on the Ijaz al-Qur'an, the aspects that give the Qur'an the miraculous nature. So this is one, the other is the preservation and the challenge and etc. And so sister said the law, it makes sense to your fitra, to your mind, and it will make society the best society possible. Hmm? It will give the best balance. It will give the best uh, justice, adl, and it will give the best uh, way of life for everybody, everybody. The human, the jinn, the the um, <clears throat> animals, the trees, the atmosphere, everything. Yeah. So this is the mu'jiza of uh, Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Anybody want to add to that before we go into the ayat? Yeah, just to say that uh, uh, Muhammad was uh, illiterate himself, and uh, when he wrote the Quran, he has lived for forty years. So his people, they don't know him as a poet or doing anything in literature. So they were astonished, obviously, when he produced the Quran. Obviously, it was revealed to him. Not, he didn't do it. And uh, for the um, Ahl al-Kitab, he mentioned uh, uh, historical uh, facts that they only know, because the uh, Arab in Quraysh, they didn't know anything about uh, Musa or Isa or uh, about Ad and Thamud and all these people. Mm. So there's, there, there are historical facts in it that yeah. Ahlul Kitab, they know, and it was written in their books at the time. But obviously, they, um, they didn't, uh, they were very arrogant at the time. Yes. So this, 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 it's part of the mu'jiz of the Quran, it, it, not only the, the, the uh, balagha and, and, and fasaha, but also yeah. there are historical facts. And now there are scientific facts as well, as yeah. we know. And there are things that the Prophet ﷺ, he said would happen, like Surah Ar Rum. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Surah Ar Rum. So there are many, as, as I said, Ijaz al Quran itself is a topic in the Ulum al Quran, which is very good for our, our Iman and our love for Allah, His Messenger, for Al Quran, and for our shukr. We become grateful to Allah. The Allah Ta'ala, He gave us the haqq 
and the haq is haq and we then know the batil to be batil because of the haq and we thank Allah for that alhamdulillah khair jazakallah khair for that <clears throat> so when we go to the uh, some of the proofs then some of the evidences as we have mentioned the quran's eternal challenge we have already mentioned that that if you don't believe in this to be from allah then either you are saying it is from muhammad himself sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam but you have known him like the brother said for 40 years he has been amongst you and you as a society you have put him on the top of your heads yeah in terms of the respect and honor and his dignity and you have given him the title of as-sadiq the most truthful that you you bear witness that he is the most truthful al-amin you bear witness that he is the most trustworthy person in the whole of your society community and you know he is on me he is not lettered he did not learn how to read or write and neither did he read or write anything before this in fact he, and neither is he a poet all of this is in the quran and neither is a poet it doesn't suit him he cannot do poetry eh? he cannot say poems subhanallah <laughs> He, he made him such, uh, والسلام, he was unable to say poetry. And when he did try, Abu Bakr, he, he helped him to show him, no, you are, subhanAllah, you are not a poet because your poetry, if you try to even repeat some poetry, the Prophet ﷺ made a mistake because this is not his ability. Allah Ta'ala didn't because he wanted to show the proof of the Quran. So all these characteristics of the Prophet ﷺ and his life, and then, if we look at Surah al rum Ayah 2 and 3, <clears throat> look at what he has uh, told us at that time, what would happen in the future. And in our today language, we call it a prediction. But uh, yani we have to understand it in the right context. That Allah Ta'ala is saying to the Prophet والسلام, after the huruf of Al-Muqatta'at, Alif, Lam, Mim, غُلِبَتِ الرُّومِ so this is telling us that uh, the Byzantians, the Christians, if you like, they have been defeated. Yes, they have been defeated. But you will find that after this, in, within nine years, uh, the tables will turn. The tables will turn and those people who were defeated will actually be the conquerors. Although you think that this is impossible. So there are two aspects to this Mu'jiza prediction. One is how could it be possible that you can say, predict something which is so unlikely to happen, number one, because the two empires, one that has dominated them is mighty and the other has been ruined. So how within nine years they can turn the tables seems impossible the other is that this is also the Mufassirin say this is also uh, the glad tiding the news of the prediction of the battle of Badr battle of Badr because it is at the same time <clears throat> that both of these victories took place in Arabia and outside of Arabia so Allah Ta'ala he is telling us <clears throat> this is what will happen and of course it happened as he said uh, جل, and as the Prophet والسلام, said وسلم, so this is a mu'jiza that how can you say this is from other than Allah when all of that which is being said here is coming true and as we said this is one, one aspect one aspect the other real mu'jiza of the Quran according to uh, our pious predecessors is that when you read the Quran, when you read the Quran, you will find that whatever it is saying is already written on your heart. SubhanAllah. It will corroborate, it will reinforce, it will reignite what is already in your heart, in your fitrah. That is why we say Nurun ala Nur. Allah Ta'ala sends the light upon the light in the heart of the human. And uh, the other aspect of the uh, messengerhood of the Prophet in Surah Ash-Shu'ara, <clears throat> Ayah 108. Ayah 108. 
Is this aspect? Wama asaluk asalukum alayhi min ajrin inna in ajri ya illa Allah Rabbil Alamin. Now, in this surah, in this surah, you will find this ayah. This is ayah tarji, which means it is repeated again and again and again and again. And the ayah after it's repeated, fattaqullah wa atiyun is repeated. So fear Allah and obey me. Which means all the prophets, all the prophets that came, all the messengers that came, they said the same thing. They said the same thing. They said the same thing. Yeah, again and again and again um, in this surah to show us that the continuity of the message. Yeah, all the messengers, prophets, they came with the same message, which was "Fattakullaha, have taqwa of Allah wa atiyuni." Obey my way, I will show you how to obtain the taqwa of Allah and the Prophet والسلام, He has said exactly the same and to elaborate even further You know, I know, mashallah, a lot of you are doctors, etc. And uh, you know that you have sometimes you have these graphs, I think is it, is it for the heartbeat? I don't know what it's called exactly, but you see your heart beating, yeah? Okay, and then suddenly you see something up or it suddenly goes down, yeah? Okay, so I don't know, what do you call this? Electrocardiogram, ECG. Oh, ECG. So what is this, this uh, abnormal activity? Anything, any name for this? Okay, not worry. There this are many I different names for this, but uh, you can simply call it as an ectopic, which is an abnormal beat, abnormal activity. Thank you. Ectopic. E-C-T-O-P-I-C. E ectopic. Like sister. Abnormal activity. Yeah? You see this? So in all of the Quran, we find that there is no ectopic if I can use that word, maybe it's not right fully, but anyway, I think you understand. There is no ectopic um, message. It is all very clear and it is all consistent throughout the Quran, the whole Quran, the whole message, every messenger's message, the same message, which is uh, one Allah. And I'm just messenger, Abduhu wa Rasulu. Believe in Allah, believe in me as messenger of Allah. I'm here to show you how to be the best person you can be by Allah's guidance and we have to live for the hereafter. Simple, yeah? However, if you compare that to Christian belief, Christian belief is the ectopic uh, syndrome, let's say, yeah? I don't know what else to call it, or the ectopic um, reading. Suddenly, every prophet until Isa alayhi salam, according to them, is saying Allah, Messenger, Allah, Messenger, Allah, Messenger, Akhirah. And suddenly you are saying that Jesus said, I am son. So everything, everything before that is now uh, yani, cancelled. Doesn't make sense. This is an anomaly. This is an abnormal saying. So Allah Ta'ala is telling us, the Quran is telling us, no. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is just a continuation of this, this uh, message, which is... Uh, which is uh, um, understood and recognized by your heart, your mind, and your, uh, uh, the history of prophethood. So therefore, think about that. And essentially, all these ayat, evidences or proofs or mu'jizat, all of these are to get people to think honestly, sincerely, consider the, the truth and to see the falsehood and then they have the right to decide. La ikraha fi din qad tabayyina rushtu min al ghay. You cannot force anybody to believe, have a belief. You know, belief is in the heart. The truth and the falsehood has been differentiated, clearly demarked. Now it is up to the person to decide. And this is again one of the evidences of the prophethood of the Prophet that 
<clears throat> you don't need to be a scientist. You don't need to be a philosopher. You don't need to be anybody. You just need to be human and be honest and you will see the message for its truth. <clears throat> As I said, there are many things we can say about the uh, Risala of Muhammad and its proofs, but these are just some of them. <clears throat> so the other thing which is evidence and food for thought is from Surah Al-Furqan. Surah Al-Furqan. Let's just uh, look at Surah Al-Furqan briefly to inshallah appreciate this in a bit more detail. Surah Al-Furqan. We start, we look at the beginning of the surah and we will look at uh, the ending, not exactly ending, but part of the ending of the surah to appreciate this uh, in a bit more detail. So Surah Al-Furqan, after Allah Ta'ala, he is telling us that he is the one who sent the Quran. <coughs> The disbelievers, their response is, as it says here, kafaru, the people of disbelief said, Inna, in hadha illa ifkun. This Quran is nothing but, a lie, iftarahu, yes, that has been concocted, wa'anahu alay, and the Prophet now he has made this up, and others have helped him to also make this Quran from other scriptures, etc, etc. So we therefore disbelieve in it. Yeah. And not only that, in fact, they go to the extent in fact, they go to the ex extent to say that why was not the angel sent to us? Yeah? To us. Okay. To us. In this surah, it mentions uh, maybe I missed it. Uh, here it is. Yes, they are saying, why was they not sent down to him an angel? The other meaning of this is, why was not an angel sent to these people? Meaning they're saying, we are better than Muhammad. We should have received the angel. Yeah. So in response to all of this, that they are saying, no, this is lies. This is uh, fabrication. Look how Allah Ta'ala responds to them. Yeah, their allegations, their objections, which they themselves, they know, they are, <clears throat> they are nothing except this. They are just following their desire, but then Allah Ta'ala, he responds in a very beautiful manner. In a very beautiful manner, starting from Ibadur Rahman. So let me just reiterate what's happening here. They are uh, complaining their allegation is that this is iftara. Yeah, this is fabrication. You have made it up. Allah Ta'ala says, no, you are following your desire, Hawa. But now Allah Ta'ala, he responds to their, their evil. This is their evil. Yes, wala tastawis hasana wala sayyia. This is sayyia. Allah Ta'ala responds with hasana. Beautiful response. What is the beautiful response? Why are you following your desire and lying to yourself that it is fabricated and you are spending all of your time and all of your effort doing what? Denying the truth. Who will, who will, uh, lose in the end, you will lose. You will lose in the end. Instead of all this effort, why don't you become people of goodness? Yes, become people of goodness. And now, the proof of the Risala here is, look at the fruit of the message. Fruit of the message of Muhammad wasallam. Look at the people that he has grown here. They are Ibadur Rahman. Yeah? Ibadur Rahman. Ibadur Rahman. Look at these people. Why are you going away from your tazkiyah? Instead, you should be following them. So, Allah Ta'ala says the people who have followed Muhammad والسلام, very quickly, let's look at some characteristics. They are people who are humble when they walk on the earth. When, when the 
jahil person the jahil here means a person who doesn't know the sense of how to speak with sense meaning would say whatever he thinks or whatever he comes to his mind they respond with beauty they spend their nights in qiyam and sujood they ask allah taala's uh, uh, protection from the punishment they are the people who spend sensibly neither spend too much neither are they miserly they do not commit shirk they do not so they do not commit major sins shirk the murder hmm? they do not commit zina allah taala is saying that if you do toba and you do good deeds look at this beautiful ayah no time to go into detail fa ulaika yubaddilullahu sayyiatihim hasana subhan allah taala is saying if you do toba and you do good deeds after you believe in allah and his messenger your bad deeds that you have done allah will re- he will replace them with good deeds now there are many tafsir about this but just take it for one tafsir that all the bad you did it will turn into good to so allah taala is saying these people who you are saying they are following this anaudu billah this innovator look at their character they never testify to falsehood so they establish justice social justice they do not take waste their time with any futile activity and they always listen to allah attentively and they are always worried about their children and their families they are responsible leaders they always worry about those they are leading o quraish you should think about who are you leading where are you leading them to are you leading your people to jannah towards the millat of ibrahim or are you going away from the millat of ibrahim and going towards the hell fire these are the people you want to be these are the people who are the result of the message of muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam consider it you see this mujiza subhanallah living living miracle the people are the living miracle today today the believers the ummah can still be the biggest living practical observable miracle of this quran if we follow it subhanallah alazim khair i'm going to stop there any question anything to add before we go to the expectations part yes brother uh, you mentioned the uh, hasanat and sayiat here um yes. th- this is the only currency really that we should deal with Uh, because because on the day of judgment there is no money there is nothing there is hasanat and sayiat right. and you will be judged you will be given your book in your hand the right hand if your hasanat exceed your sayiat right. and the other way around and um, unfortunately some uh, people their hasanat will be equal to their sayiat what we call them rijal al araf so they will be on the araf and they look at their right hand they will see people of jannah So they say salamun alaykum uh, for the ahli jannah but they cannot enter jannah and they look at their left hand they'll see uh, the hell fire and the people there and they say oh allah don't uh, put us in hell fire with the uh, with those transgressors mm-hmm. uh, and then at the end allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, by his mercy we ob- obviously everything is by the mercy of allah they will enter paradise after they stay on this uh, araf for as long as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will so yes the the hasanat and sayat are are the main really currency that sh- should we should deal with in this life and the hereafter i would say jazakallah khair akhi thank you very much for that yes absolutely hasanat and the climax the climax of this is surah uh, fussilat hamim as-sajda wa la tastawi al-hasana wa la as-sayyi'a idfa' billati hi ahsan فاذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوه كانه ولي حميم وما يلقاها الا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها الا ذو حظ عظيم ما لا تلمك from among those people i mean ya rabbal alamin amen so then the expectations from us now expectations from us that we believe in muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam as abduhu wa rasuluhu wa khatam an nabiyyin is given one in surah al-furqan ayah 30 allah taala expects from us <coughs> and he has guided us to be aware of this the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam he said in his life to his 
specific audience, the Quraysh and the Arabs, and he will say on the day of judgment regarding his arm um, general audience that he was sent to the whole of mankind until the last day, Waqal al-Rasul, the Prophet said, and he will say, Ya Rabb, O oh my Lord, inna qawmi, my people, ittakhadu hadha al-Qur'ana mahjura. They took my Qur'an mahjuran. Mahjuran means you did hijra from it. You left it. You abandoned it. And there are five levels of uh, mahjuri of al-Qur'an. Yes, five levels of the abandonment of al-Qur'an, which we have to work hard to save ourselves from. According to this ayah and the tafsir, if you read the Ibn Kathir, etc. One is, the first level is, believe in the Qur'an. So do not, if you don't believe in the Qur'an, you are abandoning the Qur'an at the first level. <clears throat> Number two level is not to read it, not to recite it. So that's another abandonment of the Qur'an. Third is, you may believe and read, but you don't understand. Or we may not understand, may Allah protect us from that. The other is, we may believe, read, recite, understand, but we don't act amal. And uh, what is the fifth? Who can tell us fifth? Each other's. Yes. Invite to its message. Da'wah. Woman asanu qawlam mimman da'a ilallah. To its message. So we should strive to believe in Al-Quran. Alhamdulillah, we believe in Al-Quran as the kalam Allah sent down to Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam through Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. It is the Kalamullah, it is preserved, it is perfect, and Allah Ta'ala, He has given it for our guidance. We recite it, Alhamdulillah, we are trying to understand it, and we are trying to act upon it, and we have to try to invite to its message. If we can tick these five boxes, then inshallah, 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 we will not come under the, the complaint of the Prophet Sallallahu on the Day of Judgment. May Allah Ta'ala not make us come from among those people. May Allah Ta'ala make us from amongst those people at the Kawthar. Where, where the Prophet ﷺ sees us and he's happy to see us. He's glad, he's proud to see us because we became the messengers of the Messenger ﷺ. Brothers, sisters, this is what our life is about. Yes. Everything else is just for this purpose. Our eating, our drinking, our sleeping, our marrying, our children, our job, our everything is for this one purpose. And if we can synergize all of those activities for this purpose and harness them for this in this direction, then inshallah ta'ala we become the people that we would be happy in this life because we know we are trying to do what we can despite us being weak and making mistakes. And inshallah, on the Day of Judgment, we would be happy and uh, we would meet our messenger with the uh, open arms, inshallah. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. So this is uh, one of the aspects of uh, what is expected from us as the believers in Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam. And uh, I'm going, because of the shortage of time, I just want to go to Surah Al-Ahzab now to further elaborate our relationship with Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi, wa alayhi wa sallam. Surah Al-Ahzab is a beautiful surah for this. And uh, if you remember, do you remember which surah we mentioned before, many few weeks ago, not many, a few weeks ago, regarding the relationship of uh, a society with the Prophet Can anybody remember which surah it was? Surah Al-Ahzab. Yeah, which surah? Surah Al-Nur. Mm, um, so well, Sort of, but not exactly the person of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as much. Earlier in the, in the course we did. Any, I think the sisters may remember. There's a link, there's a hint in that. Surah <laughs> Al-Nisa. Jazakallah khair. Brother mentioned it. 
Surat An Nisa. Eh? So let's look at these ayat, beautiful ayat, and then we'll conclude. There's five ayat, six ayat. May Allah Taala make us the misdaq of these ayat, make us the people of these ayat of Surat Al Ahzab. You know, Surat Al Ahzab is when there is the battle of the <coughs> trench, and Allah Taala is telling us all of these difficulties you can overcome. If you do these five things, number one, and Nabiu Aula bil Mu'minina min anfusihim. Number one, the Prophet he is more beloved to you, more close to you, more worthy. You give him more value, love than anybody, even yourselves. As the Prophet sallallahu said, none of you believes until you make me more beloved to you than your sons, your daughters, and all of humanity. He is the most beloved, number one. Number two, ayah 21. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَةِ وَذَكَرُ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Allah Ta'ala is saying, in Muhammad وسلم, is the best example, best uswatun hasana means the best uswa. Everything of his life is the best example. If you love him, honor him, then follow his example. His life, all his life, is a testimony to the ibadah of Allah, a testimony of concern for humanity, a testimony to purity. So follow his way, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then ayah 36. Yes, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ Whenever Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and of course when Allah Ta'ala decides and his messenger decides and his messenger only decides what Allah has decided for him that when he decides a matter then the believer, true believer will have no issue with that will have no choice meaning will not want to follow anything but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in fact, the true believer will look forward, will look forward to Muhammad Sallallahu giving a decision so that he can and she can follow it happily, happily, ex excited, should be excited. Oh, I want to follow Muhammad Sallallahu decision. This is the true belief in Muhammad And then Ayah 40, as Allah Ta'ala, he has sent Muhammad as a messenger and his Khataman Nabiyin. Makana Muhammadun Aba Ahadim Rijalikum. Walakir Rasulullahi wa Khataman Nabiyin. He is the final prophet. He is the seal of the messengers and the prophets. La Nabi Abadi. No prophet will come after the Prophet, which means we have to now become the conveyors of his message, as he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the last khutbah, the last sermon. The people who are present now, who witnessed this, my khutbah, and have witnessed the Quran, they have witnessed me, they have taken this message from me, I have come to the end of my job, I'm giving it to you now. You have to take it to all other people until the last day. This is the, this is the effect of Khatam and Nabeen upon us, that we are expected now to be the flag bearers and the torch bearers of Muhammad sallallahu message which is in the Quran and is in practice and finally in ayah 56 whenever we hear the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam's name inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator of the heavens and the earth and his great creation the angels whenever they hear even the Prophet Sallallahu name. They even, they send salutations. They, the angels pray for the Prophet Sallallahu and Allah Ta'ala sends his blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu So, Ya Yulladina Amanu, O believers, Sallu Alayhi wa Sallimu Taslima. You also send your blessings and peace and prayers upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alayhi wa Sallam. Allahumma Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Kama Sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim in Nakahan Majid. Allahumma Barik ala Muhammad. وعلى محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. And brothers and sisters, this sending salawat and salam upon the Prophet is one of the 
best, best du'as we can make. One of the best du'as, in fact, I mentioned the hadith in which the, the, the companion asked, and you should check it in Ibn Kathir, Tafsir Ibn Kathir, when he asked the Prophet how much of my du'a should be dedicated to sending salawat and salam upon you? He said one quarter. He said, what if more? He said, no problem, good. He said half. He said, no problem, more. Two thirds, three thirds, uh, three fourths. The whole dua even, subhanAllah, if we spent just in saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad, this attracts Allah Ta'ala's mercy, this attracts Allah Ta'ala's blessings, this attracts Allah Ta'ala's happiness, his rida, and what else we are living for except for the rida of Allah. So may Allah Ta'ala make us the misdaq, the people who live up, inshallah, and become the embodiment of the love and the following, the obedience, and the conveys of the message of the messenger alayhi salatu was salam. So with that, alhamdulillah, we have uh, come to briefly look at uh, the fourth group of uh, this uh, the Quranic overview, <clears throat> some of the proofs, evidences, and uh, <clears throat> which give us iman and then expectations that give us direction. So all of this, alhamdulillah, from uh, the grace of Allah and his tazkiyah. So if you want to add now anything, bismillah, tafadilu. Brother Masood, um, you know the, this uh, ayah you just recited, number 56 from Surah Al-Ahzab, um, Inna Allah al-Malaika. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's amal, isn't it? Like us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does something. We should follow this as a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, one thing we need to be very uh, careful with yeah. is... Uh, Allah Ta'ala sending salawat upon Nabi yeah. is something we cannot understand. We don't know how. Okay. We do not make tashbih that it is like this. We do not try to explain. We can't because laysa ka mithlihi shay. Nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, this is from the ayat mutashabihat, which we believe in because Allah Ta'ala says, but we cannot know the actual kafiyah, the actual existence of this, how Allah Ta'ala says, what he says. But we say, yes, Allah says, because Allah Ta'ala said, he says, and then we don't say more than that. Subhanallah. Jazakallah khair. Subhanallah. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Anybody else like to add anything or ask anything? I just have one one thing to add, really, that uh, the Prophet, alayhi is our role model as, as uh, you said, uh, as, as in the ayah. Um, and uh, without the Prophet والسلام, we would not have known Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, uh, the, the, the actual and real knowledge. And we wouldn't have known how to uh, do ibadah and do our salat and do our psalm. So <clears throat> that's, that's why the Prophet والسلام, is so dearer to us because without him, really, would have been in darkness, and we wouldn't yep. have yep. known how to uh, worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yep. So uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, we salli ala Nabi by raising his ranks. Obviously, whenever we do salat uh, ala Muhammad sallam, his ranks will be raised uh, by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and the malaika will make uh, supplication for the Prophet to raise his ranks as well whenever they do salat. So salat here is dua uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, absolutely right. It should be day, um, absolutely every day in our dhikr, day and night, we should uh, uh, send salawat ala Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Bismillah. I'll hand over to Dr. Osama. Jazakallah khair, brother. Jazakallah khair, brother, sisters, uh, uh, for joining us and participating in today's session. Uh, I'm sure you will agree that it was uh, very helpful and enlightening. Just to remind you that our Sira series that started on Friday will continue next Friday, inshallah, at 8 p.m. The yes. Zoom details remain unchanged, so please log on at 8 p.m. But I will, I'll inshallah, share the, share the message again. I uploaded the recording of the first session on the Masjid's YouTube channel, and uh, I have shared the link to that channel in the chat box. So please subscribe to that channel. 
Uh, see you all on Friday, inshallah. Please share the details of these sessions with your friends and colleagues so that more and more people benefit from them. And if only one person gets guided because of us, it will be better for us than the red camels, inshallah. Amen. Amen. Can I say something? First of all, Alhamdulillah, mashallah, I'm blessed to uh, being able to attend a couple of these talks. Mashallah, it's a great work what you are doing. And uh, mashallah, jazakallah khair to my brother who has uh, uh, given his precious time to all of us. Mashallah, it's the best form of dawah we can extend indeed. But can I request you something for the Sira series? Uh, you know, the details which you passed me on a couple of days ago, I tried yeah. my level best to log in with the password you provided, but I tried infinite times, but I think I couldn't, unfortunately. Is there any chance you can change the password to a more easier word which we can use? I, I don't know. There might, be, not, there might be something yeah. wrong at my end, but me, my son, we tried quite a few times, but we couldn't log on with any of the... Um, okay. But by yeah. changing it to capital, small letters, whatever, I tried to cut, copy, paste, couldn't do anything. So if there is any possibility and you can change that. I will, I will inshallah try. You're not the exactly. first one who said that. But quite a few <laughs> quite, quite a few people said, raised this point. Yeah. And I think uh, the mm. there, was a, there was a dot before that. I think that was a problem. No, I, I tried with that as well. Yeah, as I you did say that, earlier. yeah. Uh, yeah, I tried course, yeah. quite a few times, but it didn't work at all. So if you can change the passwords to some easier, familiar word, maybe with yes. a star or some other asterisk, uh, so that we can try it again. Yeah, just I'll see thing. if I can. I can in, sure. if I can actually remove sure. that password altogether on Zoom. I, I'll, I'll see. That if I would be easier. Out. That would be a yeah. lot easier. But if I can't do that. Sure. If I, but if I can't do that, I will upload all the videos sure. on YouTube That's channel, fine. inshallah. That's fine. So I'll do it right. as soon as possible, inshallah. Okay. Jazakallah, so, brother. Jazakallah, Jazakallah khair for your comments. Jazakallah. Jazakallah khair, brother Masood, for a very, well, Jazakallah khair, brother Masood, for a very, for a lovely reminder. Oh, yeah. We are really grateful to you for Kabbalah. giving your precious time. Jazakallah, ameen, ameen, all of us. Ameen, ameen. Ameen, Jazakallah. Thank you very much, brother. Jazakumullah. Allah, Allah. 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 Allah.